This video covers how to statically restrict and secure your services using annotations. To try that out, we go over to the Business Application Studio, which we already have used in the previous episodes. Therefore, we create a new HTTP file called restrictions.htp and let's try out a couple of things. First, we want to query some offers and we want to query some books. Let's see if that works. We deploy data model and the CSV files once again to the database so that all the previous entries are overwritten and we only have the data from the CSV files. So let's start the server and have a look if we have access to our offers and books entities. My server is running and we can now hit send request to send an OData query operation using the HAP method get. We get a list of offers and we also get a list of books, both with the OData query operation. Let's try one further thing. And let's see if we can create a offer. So what we need is basically two attributes for a new offer. It's the ID and we need a name for the new offer, which is me in this case. Let's try if that works. We get a response 201 created and we get the response of the created record. Let's try if we can read the new offer and as you can see with the ID 4711 it's Max Schleifinger. Cool, let's also try that for the books. And what we need over here is basically four attributes. It's an ID for the book, which is 99, title of the book, Java Rocks. We have 10 of those books in stock. And who has written that book is actually myself. Uh, 47.11, cool. You need the hashes in between, so it um, basically says that it's different requests here. And send a request. And as you can see, the book was also created. Well, we could try in the meantime what we haven't shown because we're using associations between the entities. We are now able to navigate from one entity to the other, for example, if we want to see uh, the books of an offer, we can simply use the expand option and expand the books and can now see that uh, Douglas Adams has two books in our database. Um, or for example, Max Schleifmid has one book. Or the other way around, we can now say um, I'll expand offer and should now get the offer of each book exactly as we have seen it the other way around with books. So the book Java Rocks has an offer with the ID 4711 and the name of the offer is Max Schleifmina. So we have seen that we have read and write access to both of the entities. And what we can do now is to restrict access to 
the entities of the service. If we have a look at the documentation, there's, for example, a annotation which says uh, read only. That means no matter which user is logged on, this service or this entity of the service is read only. Let us try that in a second. We go to our service definition and change both of the entities to read only. And if we restart the server, we should then see that we can't create new authors and we can't create new books. For the sake of uh, unique keys, we change the idea of the book and the idea of the offer and send a request and you'll get a HTTP 405 method not allowed. And as well for the books entity, it's exactly the same. So let's have a look at the metadata of our service and see what the annotation results in. We have the entity container for books and basically says that it's not deletable, it's not insertable, and it's not updatable and it's read only. The annotation we have used right now is a so-called shortcut annotation, which means that the annotation read only results in those three annotations of the OData metadata. But what if you would want to do it more granularly? If you go back to the documentation, there's already a section which says that this results in OData annotations, but we can also do it more granularly directly in CDS. So let's copy that line and go over to our service definition and replace the shortcut annotation of our books entity with the actual capabilities and remove all the others and say it's only, it's not insertable and restart the application and have a look at what happens to the metadata of our books entity. And as you can see, the annotations of our entity container books only has one resulting annotation, which means insertable false. We can now also say it's additionally deletable and restart the server and see what it results in. And as you can see, it has now the annotation deletable true. That's it for static restrictions to our service and entities. There's definitely more when it comes to authorization with involved users, there are annotations like requires and restrict, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching.